In this video I introduce the idea of correlation and I offer a rigorous proof for why the correlation has to be between negative 1 and 1. For starters, the correlation is defined as the covariance divided by the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y. And we want to show that the correlation is between negative 1 and 1. Now that's equivalent to, we could square both sides, showing that the square of the correlation is between 0 and 1. Squaring it means it's going to be positive, but we need to show that this combination of covariances and variances is going to be less than 1. But to do that, we need to establish sort of a preliminary result. We're going to need an expression for the variance of a linear combination. A and B are constants, X and Y are elements of our random vector. We can compute the variance of this function of a random vector by just taking this function of the random vector, subtracting off the mean of that function, squaring it, and computing the expectation of that. And so that's what this expression here does. We just plug in what the variance of a function of a random vector is. That's just going to be the expectation of the function of the random vector minus its mean, and then we square that difference. Uh, the next thing that we'll do is we'll group x's and we'll group y's. Uh, we can group each of these terms by themselves, and then when we multiply out the squared term, we'll be able to keep those terms together. That's going to lead to a very convenient formulation. Another thing that you'll notice is that within each of these terms, there's a constant term that can come out front. A is in both x terms, and B is in both y term, but we'll still keep the a's and b's with their, with their respective terms. Okay, so the next thing that we'll do is we'll multiply this out. We'll square this term, we'll square this term, and then we'll have two cross terms. And now, as you can see, this is just going to be a linear combination of random variables. We can bring the constant terms out front of each of these terms, or we, we can break the expectation into three different expectations, and what we'll end up seeing is this first term it's going to be a squared times the variance of x. This second term is going to be b squared times the variance of y. And this third term is going to be 2ab times the covariance of x with y. Apart from being a useful formula to prove this result on correlations, this is going to be a useful formula in general whenever we have linear functions of random variables. So proving the general case is actually quite a nice thing to do at this stage. To go ahead and prove this result, let's consider this formula, but for the special case where b equals 1. Let's just go ahead and minimize the value of a. So let's take the first order condition of this expression with respect to a. Just take the derivative with respect to a, set it equal to 0. Now we can go ahead and solve for this value of a that minimizes this variance. And we get a value of a that actually turns out to be quite special. So we're picking a particular value of a. We're just going to plug it up into this variance. So that's what we did in this expression here. And we can make a few simplifications to, uh, to what we're seeing here. First things first, the squared term knocks out that negative. Uh, if we square the negative, it's going to become positive. Next thing is, this variance cancels with one of the variances in the denominator but we still have a covariance squared in the numerator. Next thing, we can bring this negative sign out, and we'll notice that we get a covariance squared in the numerator of this third term. With those simplifications, we see that we have a common factor, and we can bring those together. This covariance squared over variance of x shows up in the first term and the third term. And so we can group those together. There's one of them here, but we subtract two of them here. And so now we have an expression for this minimized variance of this linear combination. So if we wanted to minimize the variance, we actually have an expression in terms of covariance of x and y, variance of x and variance of y. Now, one thing about variances is that they must be positive. So this is just an expression for a variance, but we know something very special about that. This is bigger than zero. Now, this covariance squared over variance of x term is negative. If we want to make it positive, we can bring it on the other side of this inequality. And then we can multiply both sides by variance of x. So that's what we do to get this inequality here. So the variance of x times the variance of y is bigger than the covariance of x and y squared. Now, this is actually exactly the inequality that we're looking for. 
And to see this, we can divide both sides by the variances on the left-hand side. We get exactly what we were hoping to get. This is the correlation squared, and we've just shown that the correlation squared is less than 1 in magnitude. Now that completes the proof that the correlation must be between negative 1 and 1. The, the value of this proof isn't so much in the result, but getting used to all of the different ways that you can manipulate variances and covariances. In econometrics, we're going to be doing a lot of manipulating covariances and variances. And that's going to be very important. So understand the proof not only for the result that correlations are between negative 1 and 1, but also understand the proof uh, for the manipulations that we do. How do you deal with a linear combination of random variables? Can you compute its variance? Um, how, um, how can you uh, perform some algebra with covariances and variances? Those are very important concepts and you'll need to master them when you're doing an econometrics course.